Hello everyone, it's Mari. I'm back again today for the Vicki Booten Design Team and the Storyteller Collection. This is the 12 by 12 project that I'm going to be working on with you today. And I'm going to be using a bunch of the art crayons. The art crayons come in three different sets, the warms, the cools, and the neutrals. And I'm going to be mixing up all three of those sets to create my project today. Now I've got a bunch of the colors scribbled out on a piece of plastic. This is the plastic that actually comes with the um, stencil brushes, I believe. And I'm just mixing those up. I've uh, added some water to those art crayons in here. You can just see I'm just mixing them with my watercolor brush. And I have my foundations paper on my desk here. If you're not familiar with foundations paper, it is a really, really heavy, heavyweight cardstock that really is fantastic for mixed media applications and I am going to just take my brush and add some of that pigment to my project here. I'm going to pick up my paper, let it run around a little bit. I'm going to do some splattering and just have fun with applying this pigment to my project. I wanted a really really soft pink and when you see the photo that I'm going to be using today it will be obvious to you why I wanted this really soft pink color. And I love the color that I was able to achieve. And one of the things that I love so much about these art crayons is they're really easy to mix. So with those three different sets, the warms, the cools, and the neutrals, you can basically just about achieve any color that you want. And I love how they always go so well with Vicky's different collections. And so this is a really great way to create a palette for your project to match up to the papers that you're going to be using or the colors in your photograph. It's one of my favorite reasons for using a white background. So you can just customize the color to create whatever it is that you want. You can just see as I'm adding those different colors of crayons to my cardstock here, how this is just going to create this really pretty soft mixed media background for my project. And I wanted to just do a bunch of layering here for this background. So you'll see me doing that whole layering process here on the video. Now I really love this kind of like a gray blue crayon. It's one of my favorite crayons from the different sets. And I wanted to add a little bit of that in as a contrast to the pinks and peaches that you can see here that I've added already. And so I'm just going to dot and dabble with that on the paper and get that added in. I'm going to splatter again. I'm going to dry and then I'm going to add some more layers here as I go along. So this is my Ranger heat tool here and I'm just going to do a little bit of heating there and, and drying that up. This is one of the stencils from Storyteller. I think it's my favorite one. I love this one. I love circles. I love working with circles or geometric shapes in general. And this one's just really, really super interesting. I love the mix of closed and open space on this stencil. So you can just see here, I've got one of Vicky's stencil brushes. It's a larger one. And so I'm drying, dry brushing this through the stencil. So the stencil brush is dry and I'm picking up the dry art crayon from the piece of plastic there and just going to go ahead and add that around the layout in a variety of different places and I just love the colored texture that this adds to my background and it layers beautifully over top of what I already have there. Now I'm going to take a, a tape roll from my from my craft space and I wanted to just trace a circle onto the fresh cut paper from the 8x6 paper pad and I love having the smaller paper pad always for a collection because it's just this really nice small, uh, smaller pattern, right? Now I traced on this paper too, but I don't end up using it. I wasn't really sure which one I wanted to use at this point. Um, so you're going to see me cut it or uh, tracing on this paper too, but I'm just going to put that right back into the paper pad when I realize that I'm not going to use it. And Right now I'm wishing I had cut this portion of the video video out, but I forgot to do that. So um, you're just going to watch me do that. I'm going to set that aside. And at this point I'm going to trace, or I'm sorry, cut the circle out of that fresh cut paper. So I'm just grabbing my Kokio scissors and I'm going to just go ahead and trim that out on that pencil line. Super, super easy. It's an easy way to get a circular shape for your project. So I'm going to finish that up. 
and have that circle shape as part of the focal point area where my photo is going to go. And here you can see that adorable photo. Isn't it so sweet? So she's wearing a little pink jacket and the, the brick that she's standing on kind of has a pink tone to it as well. I really love that photograph. It's my little, uh, it's my niece's little girl. It's so adorable. Now this is a stamp from Tim Holtz. I will link up to this stamp in the description box below. It's a really interesting and fun stamp and it's all numbers and they're in a square. I just thought that was really sweet for this photo of my little uh, great niece here. I've added that stamped image with some Versamark ink. Actually, I think it's ink on three embossing ink. And now I'm taking some Nouveau Fine embossing powder. I've added that on over top of that embossing ink. And now I'm going to take my heat tool and melt that. And it's just going to create this really cool tone on tone raised area uh, in that section of the, of the, um, layout so far or my my background now I'm going to take a bunch more of the crayons so pink and yellow and white I'm going to mix those together and I just wanted to brush this over top of where I've done that heat embossing so the the white heat embossing that's melted is going to resist the crayon and the color the pigment is going to kind of fill in the area behind it so it's going to show up a lot more right but still kind of maintain that white embossing um, effects so I like that I have or I'm going to I don't remember if I've done it yet um, added stitching machine stitching around the edge of that circle piece and I'm I've distressed it with my paper distress tool and now I'm going to start thinking about my photo mat so I'm going to use the uh, library card paper from the 8x6 paper pad I'm going to use that as a mat for my photo and you can see that I've used my Tim Holtz decal edge trimmer to trim out my photo so it's already got kind of like that distressed edge look. And I'm also going to distress this paper with my paper distressing tool. I just want it to be really rough and kind of tattered looking to add some texture and interest to that photo mat area. I've even bent the corners a little bit. Now I also cut a square off of the patchwork pattern paper and I'm going to use that as a layering piece um, in my photo mat area. I'm also going to use this tag that was part of one of the cut apart sheets and I've done some machine stitching around the edges of that. So I'm going to use that tag in the um, elements in my photo mat as well just to add again another little bit of layering and interest to the photo mat area. And I'm going to take one of the die cut ticket pieces that's in the one of the die cut packs. I'm going to do some stressing and distressing and I'm going to just uh, bend it and fold it and ruffle it up a little bit make it nice and textural and I've also fussy cut a floral piece that's from the fresh cut paper I'm going to use a little bit of that down in that area as well to go along with the fresh cut florals in that circle now I've torn off the edge uh, one of the edges of the white paper here as you can see and I've also added machine stitching in a really wonky messy way to that torn edge and I'm going to adhere this down to the assemblage paper so this is the paper that on the one side it has the circles and on the back side it has that really nice kind of burgundy corduroy look to it I love that paper um, so I'm going to you can just see here I've added some foam adhesive to the back of my circle to pop it up and I'm also going to add my photo to my photo mat with some craft foam I'm going to get that stuck down and start doing the rest of the layering for my photo mat area and get those different bits adhered down and now I'm going to start thinking about adding some other details as well like this die cut butterfly I think it's a really cool um, addition to this layout it's a you know an outdoorsy type of a photograph I think the the butterfly works perfectly but let me let me just go ahead and say that the butterflies work on any layout I feel like butterflies are like um, a beautiful neutral embellishment that you could add to almost any layout really I, I love the butterflies I love that Vicky always includes them in her collections I'm a huge fan of butterflies for sure now I really love this um, vellum piece that says beautiful day and I love that little pink bird I think it just goes along so nicely with the color palette so I'm definitely going to be adding those pieces in as well and again I'm going to and also I'm going to add that little daisy there and just all of the different little bits that I'm adding, I'm just going to continue to distress them by, you know, folding them kind of and, and roughing them up and using my distressing tool there again on the different bits that I'm adding because I just want them to have more texture and just it just I think it makes them look interesting in that way. 
So if you don't like that look, obviously that's not something you're going to want to do. I'm going to add all of these different pieces with foam adhesive to create those layers. And you can just see me continuing to bend up the edges of things to create that extra little bit of texture. Now you can also see I added a strip of patterned paper on the left side of my layout. And of course that's the Mariposa paper with the butterflies. And so I wanted to repeat more of that butterfly theme on this layout. So I just put that strip to the left of that torn edge on the layout. And I love that. I think it just adds more interest to the layout with that pattern paper, it's just a little bit of pop of extra texture and so on. So now I've added some of the decoupage alphas in the circle area for my title. Um, and I've added a little bit of white twine to that tag above the photo. And now I'm adding some of the Dina Wakely gloss spray, cause you know, I'm addicted to this stuff and it's the white. And I just love how it brings the whole layout together. When you add an element that's in all of the different areas, but it's really subtle, but it's also textural. Like it's got that, it dries with that texture on it. And I love that about it. And so here you can just see, I'm adding that in and splattering all around. And so the title, when I take that um, paper off, you can see is it's a, and then beautiful day with that vellum piece there. Um, do you know what? One of the best classes I've ever taken was a class that I took at Crop and Create in Cornwall from Megan Andrew. She is a genius scrapbooker. I'm sure you guys follow her. She's so talented. And I took a title class from her. And every once in a while, when I'm, I'm stumped for a title, I'm thinking, hey, wait, what did Megan teach us in this class? And this definitely was, um, you know, inspired by Megan's teachings in that class and how, you know, you can separate the parts of a title, but it kind of makes everything draw together when you separate things like that. And I love that concept. So it's a beautiful day. And then I'm also going to take a little sticker that also kind of works into that theme. It says picture perfect. So you could even say it's a picture perfect, beautiful day. And that little um, phrase sticker from the sticker sh uh, sticker booklet from Storyteller is going to go in the side there. Now I'm not done. I, I wanted to add a few more details. So I'm going to the cardstock sticker sheet. Love those number cardstock uh, stickers on this sheet. They're so cool. And they've got that little bit of gold um, foiling on them. And I have added some, I forgot to say this, I added a splattered Heidi Swap Color Shine Gold on here too when I was adding that gloss spray. And so there's little pops of gold here and there. And then I wanted to add some chipboard. So I added the chipboard little dot with the heart in it to the tag. And basically I'm finished now. So you can just see, um, I'm also going to add this other little butterfly embellishment here. This is actually the next day. So you can see I've got different nail polish on and I've got... <laughs> I'm wearing a different sweater. Um, I was actually um, doing some filming for another event coming up. And so you can see I've kind of got some different stuff going on on my um, hands and what I'm wearing. So that's why that is. But I wanted to add another little butterfly to this area here and then another little butterfly to the bird. And that's going to finish this off. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I really appreciate your stopping by my channel and subscribing and a thumbs up would be amazing. Thank you so much and don't forget to check that description box below with links to all of the products that I used and to Vicky's blog and to her Facebook community. Thanks everyone. Have an amazing day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.